one nice thing about living in Arizona is that if you're ever painting the landscape in here, there's a lot of rocks. And I was always inspired by rocks and paintings. In many ways, that's kind of what got me into painting in the first place. I would follow these artists that had these big, beautiful, rocky mountains and rocky areas. And I was always drawn to those paintings. So early in my career, I found that painting rocks was very challenging. And it was easy to over-render them. It was easy to make them more round than they really were. And when you're painting rocks, you want a rock to feel like a rock. You want the sharp edges. You want it well-defined. You got really hard lighting on it. So I spent many years mastering the art of painting rocks, whether it's rocks on the ground or a cactus growing out of rocks or even the rocky face of a mountain. And I still enjoy the challenges of painting rocks and even though I've done a lot of rocks in my paintings, um, there's something incredible and unique about painting them. One of the things that I've been able to do that a technique that I do is I paint my rocks very thin. I use thin washes. So I always start off with my darks and I always want to establish the dark values in these rocks. This kind of helps create form and it kind of helps the layout of the rocks. And in many ways, if you can nail down the hard shadows and the darks of the rocks, then the easy part is just doing the mid-tones and the highlights afterwards. So by doing thin layers of paint and doing almost like this wash, in many ways you can almost treat oil paint like watercolors. So I, I thin my paint so there's a translucency to my paint and I move it around with my brush and almost like the effects of, of watercolor. And, and in doing so you get these unique hard lines and you get these really soft shadows mixed with hard shadows. So you got blending with the wash mixing in with the heavier dark paints and by manipulating and moving your brush around you can create interesting textures and interesting things start happening within the rocks that keeps the painting loose, keeps your brushwork loose, but also gives you a sense of realism. Now that I've painted in the darks, it's time to start applying some color. And in this particular scene, the rocks are very cool, the shadows are very cool, even the highlights for the most part are very cool. So I'm coming in with a very cool blues and I'm trying to establish not only the form, but also trying to establish some color and how it's going to relate to the rest of the scene because there are some areas of this painting that are also going to be very warm. So I want to create a sense of harmony and a sense of balance. But right now I'm trying to work in the mid-tones and the cool shadows of the rock. Also at this point I'm still not putting in a lot of detail. You can go crazy chasing the details in rocks. And when I started off painting I was constantly chasing all the details. And rendering all that is not only time consuming, but if you don't take a more holistic approach to your painting, um, often you can step back after you've done all that work and it just doesn't read very well as a rock. So early on, I'm really just knocking in those colors, really trying to create form by values and color and not so much trying to render out those details. We'll get to those details in the very end of the painting. And even then, it's easy to kind of go overboard with the details. I want this to feel more impressionistic 
and I want the viewer to see the looseness of the brushwork, but as they step back, they feel that sense of realism. The other thing too is there's something nice about having total control over the size of your art. And a lot of times if you're buying something off the shelf, then you're really limiting your potential when it comes to the crop and the composition of what you're painting. So by having full control over that, you really have a lot of say and what you're trying to convey in your painting and not being limited by size. The other nice thing is that as an artist, you know your materials. So over the years, I've been able to learn how to stretch that canvas on the stretcher bars, make my own custom stretcher bars. And there's something unique and special about not only handcrafting this painting with oils, but also being able to put your craft into the materials that you use, into the substrates, and to really, again, have full control over the materials that you're using. So that's why you see this canvas that's taped onto this board. And I'm using clear tape just for aesthetics because of filming. Um, but oftentimes I'll, I'll use blue painter's tape as well. At this point of the painting, I'm starting to build up the colors for this cactus. And the cactuses are fairly complicated, so again, I want to simplify this. Instead of thinking of it as a cactus, think of it as like a ball. So I'm painting this ball. And then I can add the details to that cactus later. And another thing that you'll notice that I do often is just like you can use your brush to put paint onto a canvas, you can also use your brush along with mineral spirits to erase paint off your canvas. And much like how artists that do charcoal drawings will not only apply charcoal, but they'll also erase charcoal to complete their art. I do the same thing with my oil paintings. Erasing paint can be just as powerful as putting paint down. And here you can see where I'm actually removing the paint in order to paint the spiky cactus. Now that I have that foundation work down, I can start focusing on the details. And much of that detail is about the highlights. And the highlights are always the last thing. It's the brightest brights that I put down in my painting. And the reason why I put these down last is because these highlights are usually often the thickest layer of paint. So once I put that down, it's much harder to, to work over the top of that. Again, I'm working thick over lean. This is also the point in the painting where I decide how much detail do I want to add in here. Because again, I'm going for an impressionistic look. Sometimes over rendering this can actually take away from that impressionistic feel to the painting. So this is really the critical part of the painting where I decide just how much of icing do I want to put on that cake to complete it, but not overdo it. When it comes to painting rocks, there's a lot of different tricks and tips that you can use to, to convey these rocks. But at the end of the day, you really got to put in the time, you really got to paint a lot of rocks, and hopefully eventually you'll find that painting rocks is actually fairly easy. I hope you find this video helpful in your journey when it comes to painting rocks. And stay tuned for up and coming videos. And make sure you hit that subscribe button.